You know, I grew up with Ninja Turtles. I loved the humor that uh, the cartoon had when I was in South Africa. I'd watch it every day, the reruns, I loved it. Um, the first movies I saw in South Africa, and they were fantastic. And, and what's so great is with today's technology, we've been able to update um, the Ninja Turtles and give them a, a scope that they've never had before. Also in a Michael Bay production, you're allowed a massive amount of action and scope in your films. And so we have had the ability to retain the humor and the charm of the, the cartoons in the first films and we've, we've been able to bring in the scope that big action movies of today have and sort of marry the two into a massive action entertaining experience. Well, I think the, the most important factor for Ninja Turtles is that they are fun. That was the number one thing I remember from being a kid, Michelangelo being funny. So that was number one. Number two, that they mutated, that I always wanted to understand and, and I can't think, you, I, you cannot ignore that these turtles were once real and mutated into Ninja Turtles, so I wanted to see that happen. Um, and again, I think when I go see superhero movies today, I, I love the spectacle and the wish fulfillment of, you know, what extra strength, or in, a, in the Ninja Turtles case, ninjutsu can, can bring to your action sequences. So that was something we really wanted to realize uh, in this movie. The big priority for me was Ninja Turtles has to be fun. The other thing was the Ninja Turtles actually originated in the Eastman and Laird comics as very hardcore vigilantes. And so I thought the opportunity here that I hadn't really seen in the past films was to make them even more badass than I'd seen them before. A lot of the fan art I found on the internet, which I thought was amazing, were these really badass, silhouette big turtles. And that was very interesting to me. So I thought in reinventing the turtles this time, if we made them a little larger than life, a little darker in their design, maybe we could have our cake and eat it too. My favorite uh, episode of any comic book franchise is the origin. So yeah, it was important to make this an origin and start it off as a fresh chapter. We sort of uh, took the archetype of April O'Neil, uh, the damsel in distress, and molded it uh, specifically to Megan, who I think brings a very um, determined sort of personality to the role. April is a character who in the movie has a lot to prove. Everyone doubts her because she's beautiful. and. Um, you really get a sense that throughout the movie she wants to show people that there's more to her than meets the eye, literally. And, um, you know, um, she becomes a real family member, a real hero for the Turtles, and there's just there's great relationships between April and Raph, or April and um, Michelangelo, who has a big crush on her, and a real respect between her and Splinter. And a lot of that, I think, comes from Megan and the way she feels about the characters because she's a massive fan of the Ninja Turtles. I think The Secret of the Ooze was like her favorite movie. And when we met her, um, she emailed myself and the producers and was just telling us what a big fan she was of the film. And, and I see it every time I show Megan a trailer or a new piece of footage. She loves the Turtles, as a fan does, not as an actor in the movie. So we just sort of brought as much of Megan to the archetypal April as possible. You know, I think a lot of what works so well in the movie w is the banter between the characters, the warmth and the charm that the turtles have with one another, the brotherhood and the family. Well, in a sense, what's funny is it is when we cast uh, the actors for the roles of the Ninja Turtles, they it was like any other audition because we wanted to keep it as real as possible. You know, Noel embodied the fun innocence of Michelangelo. I'd worked with Noel in Battle Los Angeles and he's an amazing actor. And so he was great 
because he could elevate the role. And so in addition to my, Michelangelo's comedy, there is a depth and something you really care about with his character. Alan really epitomizes um, that sort of brashness of Raphael, and you saw it in, the, in, in his um, audition. Same with uh, Jeremy, who brought this nervous nerdiness to the role. So um, the actors had to go through a normal audition process, and so you could almost see how the characters would be a year before you got to see the characters. We got really lucky to get Will Arnett, who is such a great comedian. I th he is so funny in the movie. It's awesome. Every time he's on screen, the audience laughs. There's, he just was really helpful. I could just leave the camera running, and he would just... We had sort of an embarrassment of riches to pick um, for each of his performances. He's he, extremely talented and, uh, again, elevates all the scenes that he is a part of. You always need great villains in a comic book movie, and, and Fichtner is an amazing actor. He brings a credibility and sort of a gravity to the villain role, um, which is extremely important. It, whenever Fichtner was on set, what's also great is the other actors rise to his level, and that, that helps a lot in a scene. Whenever you're directing a scene and Bill's in it, um, it's a better scene. And as a director, that's amazing because you can't really direct that a lot. It, it just comes naturally to an actor. And so to put a camera on him and watch it and feel like, wow, it's a movie, I don't have to do anything, is pretty great.